This is a live session where we're going to be chatting with Mattia from Warrior Sound in Germany. He is one of the guys who started something called Quarantine Clash. We're very excited. The little reggae community we have in India is very excited um, this weekend because Delhi Sultanate from Bass Foundation Roots is going to be the first Indian to participate in a international sound clash that's happening on um, this weekend so make sure you you know check out quarantine clash after this session but this is just kind of a little teaser a little taster for for uh, for you guys to understand what sound clash culture is because I mean while reggae rajas and bass foundation clashed quite a few years ago now probably about about eight nine years ago in Delhi um, quite a few times. I think sound clash has not happened in India for a while. So it's important just to jog everyone's memories. Also, there are a lot of new, um, you know, massive who kind of into reggae and who have maybe not been exposed to sound clash culture. Sound clash culture is very much a part of reggae music. It's very much a part of dance hall culture. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess reggae rajas kind of stopped being a clash sound. So we, the, the clashes with Bass Foundation Roots stopped. However, Bass Foundation Roots, you know, continued collecting dub plates and preparing for clashes. He just didn't have anyone to clash with. So, so what's happening on, on, on this weekend is really something momentous for reggae music in India. It's a big opportunity for Taru, for Delhi Sultanate. He, you know, he's been a um, he's been a big part of the community, and it's something that he's really looking forward to. So, like I said, this is a session that we're going to do with Warrior Sound, who is one of the founders of Quarantine Clash. Uh, he's a big, big, big sound, big selector, big MC, big DJ out of Germany, and he'll be joining us for this session just to tell us a bit about Sound Clash and also about his uh, his baby Quarantine Clash. So. Here we go. I am just to get him into the session. Let's see if we can manage this, guys. Yes, my Listen, Hold on. Let me quickly check the sound. Test, test. You hear me? Yeah, man. Loud and clear. Okay. Hold on. How's it going? Yeah, it's good, man. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, managing in the lockdown. Huh? More than managing in the lockdown, I see. You're still running things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more busy than ever before, actually. That's wicked, man. That's, That's what really it cool. is. Yeah, man. Cool. So I'm just going to give, you know, I mean, basically, I think the, you know, the, the, the point of this little chat, probably for the next 20 minutes, is kind of for our community in India to understand sound clash culture a little bit yeah and obviously also 
you know, the work you've been doing with Quarantine Clash and, you know, um, just a little bit of what people who tune in from India can expect yes. um, this weekend. So, so yeah, I, I'm just going to tell them a little bit about you. Um, yeah, man. If there's something you want to add after this, uh, go ahead. Um, I think uh, before we start, people should know that Mate has been pushing reggae music for almost 20 years now, right, in Germany? Yeah, nearly. Yeah, I started like 2001, like this, yeah, man. Nice. 2001, and I mean, he's a bad selector. He's won many Thank clashes, you. defeated Thank many you. sounds around the world. Um, one man, one man show as well. Uh, you, you, there used to be someone else on the sound, right? Yeah, there used to be someone else. Um, my brother called uh, Selector Ditch, and um, he left the sound in 2006. So okay. since 2006, I'm playing it on my own as a one man album. Bad, bad. And uh, and and the place in Germany that you're based is Wuppertal. Is that right? Wuppertal? Yes, yes. Yeah, Wuppertal. And uh, and you you play regularly at U Club or you have a club. Or is it your club? Or no, it's not my club. I'm okay. I'm doing I'm I'm working there part time. I have like a part time job here to promote the dances and thing. Right now everything is shut down. So right now not not going in the U club. But um, I do my monthly party called Jamaican Rum Night in there, and uh, that party is like really really crazy. And also since a very long time, like I think um, since 2009. Um, it's the Jamaican Rum Night, and yeah, man, it's like it was voted like six times in a row to the best party in Germany and stuff like that. So that's really crazy, man. And I'm really thankful for having a home base like this with a team around me that keeps on pushing. Yeah, man, definitely. I mean, you've been working, you know, putting in solid work for almost 20 years, flying the flag for reggae music. So you know, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a big thing for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, do you want to kind of just start by telling us a little bit about, I mean, just like an intro to Sound Clash, um, because it is quite a you know niche, uh, or what has become now and nowadays, niche yeah, 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 area, area of reggae music. Uh, so maybe just start by telling us a little bit, uh, you know, briefly about the history of Clash or where the culture. I mean, hold on, really hold on. Give me that second. Let me show you something. If you really want to know about the history of Sound Clash and how it all started. You have to get this book, which is called Bus Culture. That's uh -huh. the only thing you need to know how everything started. You see this book? Big uh -huh. like, yo, bigger than the Bible? Bus, cu bus Culture. You yeah. will learn about like how it all started, how the first sound system string up in Jamaica, fighting for the most exclusive records. And then, you know, like when one get all the people, then the other one had to lock up. This is like where this, this uh, you know, this term comes from. And nowadays it's totally different. I, I cannot tell you the history about how it started in Jamaica way back when, because I, I was not there. I learned it in, in books and history lessons as well, speaking with um, members of the sound system fraternity and, you know, learning from the old selectors and thing. I was not there when it all started. When, when I started, you know, like I get my first doublets on a mini disc. <laughs> you know, like I get my first doublet. They they were not recorded to acetate. You know, like they were not recorded straight to the record like it was like it used to be. My first doublets, I didn't get them for free. I paid for it. I went to shaky sites. I had no links. I tried to <laughs> run down artists that were in two in Germany. That's how I got into this. And then I was seeing videotapes of Death Before Dishonor in Jamaica, Clashes in Jamaica, and I was like, yo. I want to be on one of those stages one day and play a clash by myself because the whole concept of this was so exciting to me. As a Sound Clash fan, it was so exciting to me. And uh, seeing people like Ricky Trooper and Pink Panther and Bass Odyssey in them times, smashing up the players like, like nothing else, it was totally amazing. And yeah, man, so, so what I did then, I tried to um, understand what is behind this. I try to understand the culture behind it. And I try to get the knowledge about it. What, what really is happening? And uh, in the end, everything goes down to whoever entertains the people the most will be the best in that night. 
And this is still up to date. It was in them times. If you entertain the people, if you have the better records, in those times, people would come to your sound system. If your quality, your sound system quality is better, people will come to your sound system. Now, basically, everybody's playing on the same sound system in most of the clashes. And whoever entertains the crowd the best, according to the rules that are set up on that day, you, sometimes you even have to break the rules, but once you entertain the people and you get the people on your side, you will win the sound clash. And this is how it used to be, and this is how it still is. You know, like, like let me say this. Fuck all that rules that promoters put out there. Fuck all that bullshit like only foundation and tune for tune and 45s are not allowed and things like this. Everybody should free up as long as you entertain the people. If it's with the live artist, with the 45, with the dub plate, or you're doing a magic trick on stage. You know, as long as the people are there for you and vote for you in the end of the night, you did the right job. Okay, one sec, backtrack. One sec, one sec, Mateo. Let me hold you for one second. There are people who are tuned in right now who have no idea what a sound clash is. So just give them the basic concept. Okay. What is the basic concept? Forget the history, you're right. That's yeah, the yeah, whole, yeah. That's, that's another, what is the basic concept? The basic concept is two or more different DJ crews, sound systems, and um, start to play music one by one for the people and try to get the people on their side. It's a competition and there will be a winner which is um, crowned by the crowd normally. Sometimes you have judges, you have a jury, but normally the crowd of, um, the, crowd of the clash the people that are there, the public, they will decide who is the winner of the clash. And for that reason, that's why I was like talking about the entertainment part. You have to entertain the people to get them on the, your side. So yeah, it's a DJ battle, but it's, it's more than a DJ battle. It's more than a DJ battle because it's so much, you know, like a DJ battle, man, this, you have tunes that talk about your opponents. This, you have like entertaining speeches and, as I said, you can do everything to entertain the people. It's, it's so much more than, you know, a DJ battle. You think about DJ scratching with vinyl. And this is like the last thing people want to see in a, in a, in a reggae sound clash. In a reggae sound clash, they want to hear exclusive, um, exclusive, exclusive dub plays. They want to hear custom made dub plays. They want to hear funny jokes on the microphone. So let me ask you something. How, how integral to reggae music is clash is sound clash and 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 how big a part of the culture is this honestly um for me it's such a big part and you see that more and more again because look at the big festivals in jamaica look at um reggae sum fest last year like one of the big highlights before like the big stage shows them started it was the sound clash. It was thousands of people there. Look at the welcome to Jamrock Reggae Clash at Sea. Um, whenever you, people talk about the highlights of, of uh, that cruise, they will tell you one or two artists and the clash. They will tell you this artist and the clash. They will tell you, that, you know, like everybody will tell, most of them, like 80% will say the highlight of the cruise is the sound clash. With some stage shows, you know, but, but it's, so, it's so entertaining, it's so funny, it's so good. Look what happened at Rebel Salute with Dynamic and Black Scorpio, that went global, it was the highlight. So Sound Clash, even if, if it wasn't that big in the last couple of years, or here in Europe, it's like, it's like decreasing, the Sound Clash scene is decreasing, you know, there was no wine East this year plan. I hope it will be back next year. And, you know, like all those big clashes happening, it was like the biggest clashes were happening like between 2000 and 2010 probably in Europe. And from that time, it was kind of rough over here. But for the reggae scene and the reggae culture, sound clash is essential and a big, big part and, you know, like so important. For sure. So let's, let's just talk a little bit about how you kind of, I mean, so you've been, you've obviously competed, won many clashes all over. But have you been a promoter of clashes as well? Is that yes. something that you've, that's been a regular mainstay at U Club? Yeah, I also um, had to promote the rhythm clashes in Germany um, from 2007 to 2000, no, 2006 to 2010. 
which included uh, the clashes with Sentinel, Black Scorpio, Rodigan, um, the ones um, where Heavy Hammer won in 2010, the one where Civilized Z won in 2008, the War Over Europe, which probably was one of the biggest with the Irie Crew and Herbalize it as well in the finals. And um, yeah, man, then of course we did a, a lot of um, clashes in the U Club in Wuppertal. Um, and some of them worked very good and some of them we just, you know, like, it was kind of hard, man. We didn't have the turnout that we expected. Like Poison Dart versus Heavy Hammer, City Lock versus Young Hawk. Those were clashes that were like super interesting in that time. The sounds were hot and the people just didn't really go out for this. And that was kind of disappointing. So we don't do that much clashes in U Club again. But from time to time, we, we still try it because we love the culture and we love pushing it. But we're not expecting like um to to have a sold out venue when keeping a sound clash in your club it's different when we do like an open minded music battle like a hip hop versus dancehall night you know where we have like one hip hop team one dancehall team and it's like a juggling party yeah. people will come out for this but for a hardcore reggae sound clash man it's kind of rough in europe <laughs> i can imagine so so then i mean then that kind of brings us to this idea of quarantine clash because mm -hmm. it's sort of ignited i feel everything you know obviously it's very different because it's not a live i mean it's an online audience and not a physical audience yes but let's talk a little bit about that um maybe you can i mean start with your shutdown show because i remember that was you know that's something which if you guys don't know um Mattia start, he does something called a shutdown show which was i think one of the first online um sh daily show daily right? yeah it's a, daily it's a daily show today is day 46 already that's hmm. amazing so he, i started he it on the first day of the quarantine of the shutdown over here wicked so he started the show on the first day of the quarantine and you need to check it out because it's a it's a wicked show you play a lot of good music and Thank um, you. i guess that segued into quarantine clash just tell us about maybe a little bit about how that came came about the idea mm. came about. actually the two projects don't really have anything to do with each other. But I, I started the shutdown show as a daily show and um, I just, I'm so happy I did like a radio two or three weeks before the shutdown started. So I bought all the stuff for streaming week by week. I did like one stream a week and then boom, it was shut down and I had all the things because everything that I needed was then sold out for, and it's still sold out for the next four or five weeks because everyone wants to stream right now. So Walshi called me and I, I had the idea as well to do like perhaps a pay-per-view stream clash and have two sounds come into the U Club with no audience and just put out the stream and make them clash in one place. That was when uh, we were still allowed like to, to meet each other, just events were canceled for um, an undefined amount of time. But then, from day to day, the situation changed and they said, you're not allowed to meet more than one person in public and gatherings are not allowed anymore and stuff like that. So I, while she linked me and asked me if I wanna be in one online clash that he wants to promote. And I told him I had the same idea and um, that I wanted to do something. And he, he was telling me about the site he's doing this and I was telling him about my setup that I have and we just decided, okay, let's do it together. Like we knew each other for a couple of years and uh, with the, the streaming technology that I already had and, you know, the ideas that we both wanted to do a clash. And we just put me and Specs in the first clash ju just to give it like a test, you know, like yeah. we just wanted to test out the technology, the sound, how it looks and everything. And yeah. uh, the test run was so good. It, it still has, I think, the most views of all the quarantine clashes on YouTube, like 60K, 60,000 yeah. views on YouTube, no, something one. like that. It's crazy, you know, and we, we just did it for fun with 45s and the little juggling. We didn't expect like the impact be that big. So we decided to do it weekly. And uh, then from the second edition, the sounds took it super serious. Like, I mean, like they, they were preparing like for Clash Customs. They voiced customs for it. They didn't play any more 45s. They stopped playing the 45s and sounds were linking us like crazy. And we were in shock. But we, we also, of course, we were happy because the thing that we did just created an impact. So half of the sound fraternity was linking us and trying to get us on, trying to get on board. So when we had the Poison Dart versus Heavy Hammer dance then, Big Up Massive B on Jazzy T, that was a very entertaining one as well. And then, you know, with Poison Dart and Heavy Hammer and the custom start to fling from both sides, 
we were like, all right, we have a serious sound class product over here. And this is something that the people want to do. And we had in mind to do like a global, uh, international competition. And um, yeah, man, so we're really happy that uh, uh, we were able to set it up. And we have so much, we could do like two of those tournaments, so much sounds linked us. And I think we have a very great and um, a very great lineup. For, so it's basically uh, you and Walsh, who had the idea together, you had the technology and uh, Major Laser is a platform, I guess, right? Of and course. Yeah, yeah. Major Laser, Matheson, he has the big team behind him and they also support us. Um, you know, like I, I work with the, the guys of Major Laser, Matheson and uh, also Walsh, he's uh, guys, you know, in the background and the team is so amazing. I, there's a lot that I'm learning by working with uh, those professionals and um, it's very good. You know, like together we can, we can give the people a product that we're still optimizing here and there. But I mean, we have a running thing which is going on on Sundays now. On this Sunday, we have two clashes and we start the quarantine clash. So I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to, to this Sunday. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit about um, this setup, this particular quarantine clash setup. Uh, because you did yeah. sort of a, a, a few that were, you know, these one-offs, and now you've put together this idea of a tournament. Yes. So just tell us a little bit about this tournament idea and why did you maybe pick the sounds you did? Because um, a lot of people were like, oh, okay, well, I know this sound, but I don't really know this sound. Oh, India, yeah. oh, Latin America, oh, Israel. So just tell yeah. us a little bit about why you picked, you know, wh why you decided on a tournament and why you mm -hmm. picked these sounds. Okay, so we decided to do a tournament. So we were thinking about how can we lead up to a clash um, that people are looking forward to. And to do this, you have to build like a tournament that people follow over weeks. Now we have like one month. It's like, it's like a World Cup. You have like a quarterfinal, a semifinal, and then the final. And, uh, you know, the final will create a lot of hype because people heard the sounds twice already in two different clashes and they are familiar with them and they probably um, became fans of sounds they never heard before clashing online and now they want to see them taking down this trophy and trust me it's like not it's it's it, yeah it's like a world uh, online world clash kind of you know we have sounds from all over the world as you said it from india to israel from france to jamaica from Japan to Germany, you know, like it's eight sounds in the place from Latin America to, to uh, California. It's like, man, we have sounds from every corner of the world. And of course, we here in Germany, we probably don't know about um, your reggae scene in India. I'm so excited to see that. I'm so excited to see mystical youths, which I know, but see them in a clash actually, you know, like Jamaica. Ja works, Chicky Dubs. I'm so excited to see what he will bring to the table. And I know he will bring his people into the stream as well. Um, yeah, man, Bass Foundation Roots. I'm looking so forward to hear those guys play. And, um, you know, like I heard about... Sorry, go ahead, yeah. I heard about Reggae Rajas and I knew there was like a little community in India, but I, I never... I never realized, you know, like there are doublets and, you know, like I'm so excited to see that and um, explore the, the reggae scene of that side on the world. And yeah, man, I'm so happy that you guys are on board, you know, that uh, BFR is on board and I'm so looking forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's uh, actually, you know, the first kind of clashes in India were held by uh, us, Reggae Rajas Against Bass Foundation. Uh, you oh, know, nice. In, in 2011 and 12. So... I mean, yeah, Reggae Rajas could... stopped being, you know, a Clash sound. Uh, we stopped cutting Clash dubs uh, for okay. a few years now. But BFR, you know, Taru, uh, Delhi Sultanate continued his journey. Mm -hmm. So we're all okay, behind nice. him. We're all supporting him for sure. Great, um, great, you great. Know, but tell, tell me one thing. Why did, you, why did you not, for example, pick some of the bigger sounds? Why, why did you choose to give, you know, like opportunity to sounds that even if they're from Japan or, you know, Jamaica or whatever, yeah. sounds that maybe are not the biggest? But, you know, like, I don't like this uh, thinking of big and small and medium sounds. And, you know, every sound created something 
in in where they are you know like some even more you know like i mean olga jowards he's in the reggae music video of kabaka pyramid for example he did like clashes all over he was in world clash already jamaiki played two us rumbles he's well known you know like i clashed with him in 2016 like his name is out there um bfr you know like they did something in their area i recruit they did something in their area then they're, they're known for clashes as well you know every sound glockwork posse they're like nobody outside of the germany probably heard about that name but once you hear them play and you hear the doublets you will be in shock they're like the hot ticket in germany right now you know like yeah man having a platform like this is a good look for them and uh, it's also on one side um we wanted the world to watch we didn't want to have like five sounds from jamaica i'm notorious like a shabba man like he boss in jamaica already and he was you know in so many places already so right now you know the world will watch this people from japan from india from east from all over europe you know the whole world will watch this clash sure. the clashes yeah. that are coming up so yeah. this platform is so international and so big and so huge and i think it's just the right thing to showcase the the power of reggae music which brings the world together you know right. and not it's only in one place of the world but from all over the planet like everybody everybody all over the world in every corner you hear reggae music and we showcase this to the world and that's the biggest thing about this no i i agree with you 100% i think it's a great vision and i mean it's going back to your first point it's actually entertainment you know yes. and that's why it's been so successful is because it's so entertaining it's not just the dj playing reggae dancehall songs you know it's like yeah. entertainment for a few hours so Yeah, man. yeah what what do you i mean do you think like in terms of victories and actually winning these little battles or winning the tournament mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that's going to have um i mean do you think it's going to have some sort of weight going forward or it's going to be um maybe <laughs> i think this one will have yeah i think this one will have because it's not like when we are clashing on the live now in ig you know this will be no. gone in 24 hours but what we are creating is something that will be out there on youtube on twitch on you know like it will be there forever and people can rewatch it and uh, the views will climb over the years and people will remember this because this is a tournament and um i think the hype will be different than doing like okay tomorrow me and reggie rajas we play some doublets on ig live and see what happens yeah. which is a nice thing can be very entertaining and people will talk about this for a day or two but what we are doing now is going over a month and people will follow it and they are placing their bets already they're saying this sound will win and this sound will win but they don't think about that this is an online clash it's different you're not you're talking into your phone you're not talking to a crowd you don't have a direct response so this is you know it's so different from what happened before so everyone can win and everyone can entertain and everyone can flop as well so this is this is you know it it's totally new so i think the impact will be big and i think uh, the winner um will have the right to boast with this to be the first quarantine clash competition champion the qcc <laughs> <laughs> but nice one mateo so yeah i mean that's about it i think uh, you know you gave us a nice little intro into yeah, what's going on i think a lot of people are looking forward to it big up yourself big up wash yeah, big up the whole team for putting this together it's really brought the world together man so really yeah, man. yourself thanks and, for having me it's my yeah, pleasure man. looking forward yeah man Respect. see you on sunday in the stream yes sir bless up All right guys so that was uh, Mateo from Warrior Sound definitely link him up on Instagram follow him follow the work he's doing follow Quarantine Clash we've got another guest i'm just going to check in and see if he's ready to come on we've got a uh, herbalizer sultan from herbalizer um who's a big clash uh champion from Holland he's going to be joining me for a short chat as well I'm just going to check in with him and see if he's ready. In the meantime, twin time, big up yourselves all the massive who's locked in from India and around the world. I hope you guys are enjoying this. It's been a uh, it's been quite a quite a journey for us in India. 
quite a journey pushing reggae music and this is just another sort of uh you know uh another achievement for us in a way to have Delhi Sultanate and BFR Base Foundation Roots representing on a world stage is a big deal so like Matea said if you guys are tuned in and you don't know much about Sound Clash um you know you you got to dig you got to dig check out some recordings of some big sound clashes down the years he mentioned a lot of big names um that you know you, you, you probably want to check out of course the base culture book that he uh, that, you know it's kind of his bible as some you want to check out as well so sound clash is an integral part of reggae music it's an integral part of the culture maybe in india it's not been as uh, prevalent as in other parts of the world i know in europe it's very big um new york city obviously a mecca a hub of it canada as well it's quite big um but yeah we're just kind of taking baby steps in india and we'll get there so just waiting for sultan to come online and then we'll get him in the chat if you guys have any questions if anyone is tuned in you have any questions about class you can ask me right now i can try and answer to the best of my ability big up starboy nations tuned in well the, the judging of the class starboy nation the judging like uh, matea said it's 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 always the crowd that decides so there will be a few different well the way they've done it previously is that there's been a few different platforms that they use they soundclash.com has a poll uh where you can you know you can you can click choose the winner there is also um a chat room uh you know on on the youtube channel where you can pick your winner so it's 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 vote of the people um that's how it works so yeah it looks like sultan is ready to enter the meeting so we're just going to bring him in right now yes astro black hey sultan yes zeus what's going on family what's going on You good? Are you doing? Bro? I'm good, bro. Are you? How are you doing, guys? Yo, how's that injury healing up, man? All good yeah. or what? Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. Well, Ralph I'm, I'm one, recovering. <laughs> recovering? I'm reco- I'm recovering. Okay, good. Good, good, good to hear, man. So yeah, so thanks for joining us. Um, I think this is kind of just a little info session for a lot of people in India um, who. you know this is kind of their first taste of sound clash um at least in an international um you know uh, uh platform we as as you know reggae rajas clashed with base foundation many years ago a couple of times um you know so shout out to the whole people. crew huh shout out to the whole crew yeah man ziggy yes, mo diggy dang and of course also a, a sultanate from uh, from base foundation big up everyone is locked in right now everyone is tuned into this yeah man yeah so yeah so i thought maybe like you know you are such a big personality in the clash scene in 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 europe so it's really nice to have you kind of give your perspective of things and um um and really yeah. kind of explain a couple of points to us i, I i'd like to start by you know maybe you giving your explanation in just like simple terms of what a sound clash is like let's not get into how it started and this and that but what is it and what can people expect well if if i if i tell it people around me because not everybody around me understands sound clash neither so i just tell them it's a musical battle battle and the winner is the one who bring the best vibes you know because even if i go deeper and even if we are sound boys talking we saw sounds with less bigger dub box when a clash because they have vibes you know you got to be a, 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 a like you said like a, a you got to have some charisma you know you got to bring some vibes and you have to bring it over to the people so actually in one sense this is like a musical war for the one and the winner is the one who bring the best vibes that's how Definitely. i bring it simple very simple to like people who don't have a clue what sound clashes 
Nice one. Yeah, man, just a, a quick uh, a note there before we get go any further. Um, you are actually one of the most charismatic MCs I've seen and personally a big inspiration for me on this journey. Yeah, for real. I mean, like when we saw you in India, it really drove me to understand things better and also to try and, you know, um, attain a certain level of entertainment and energy um, on the stage. Right. So yeah, I, big up, I, definitely never, I, I never forget the festival we did in, in Bangalore, the NH7 festival. That was, mad. That that was, was mad. mad with the whole crew, like I said, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. the, even the soca vibes we brought there, you know, like like everything and we, the whole crowd. So yeah, definitely. Enough memories there, enough memories. For sure, man. You're, you're, you're part of the journey. You're part of the Reggae India journey. Respect, so, respect. J just uh, for those of you guys who don't know, Sultan has a sound called Herbalize It from Enskede in, Definitely. Uh, in, in Holland. And it's 20 years old, over 20 years old. 22 years old this, this year. 22 years old. So we're talking about a veteran sound. And uh, he runs War in the East Clash, which is yeah. the biggest sound clash event in Europe and possibly Definitely. in the world one of them in the world at least right so, well I'm, let's let's yeah well europe for sure yeah for sure and, so you know it's not only the the numbers but also the vibes the amount of people not. traveling from all over europe and even all over the world to you know to be at that clash to witness that clash yeah for sure so just tell us a little bit about like i mean what was it for you you know because reggae music obviously being such a huge I mean, it's it's just so wide and so big that you know that there are all diff so many different kind of aspects of it. Now, clash has become something quite niche over the years, whereas it might have started first as you know very you know integral and normal part of reggae. Now it's kind of its own thing. It's it's it's, it's I see it as quite niche. So tell me, what is it? For you, like, what, what is the real attraction of a Clash and what is the energy? I mean, why are you a Clash addict? Why have you dedicated so much of your life to Clash? Competition, I guess. I swear, it's just like very simple, you know, it's like competition. I mean, the competition, like I explained it a little bit earlier, uh, between songs trying to bring the best vibes to the crowd. It's just the competition. Simple. That's that's it for me. Sound clash is a competition, and it will always be. Without competition, it, it's it's not even a sound clash. It's just a juggle dance, or 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 a, 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 like like they have here over here in in Europe, a, a, a dub plate showcase. But I like the aspect competition because that's what sound clash is about. Trying to be the best, trying to get the crowd on your side. Definitely. So it's the thrill of the competition of the, I guess, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, as a as someone who's also promoting it, you have a different um, different vision. You're not just competing, but you're promoting. So when you talk about war in the east, when you talk about the actual promotion of the culture uh, and, and of this form of entertainment, why? I mean, why do you feel it needs to be spread across the globe? I mean, what is it? What is the what is what, what is the real global appeal that we're talking about? For me, for me, it was like just to keep that little part of culture. Because let's be honest, uh, we're talking about the reggae dancer scene in Europe, which is a subculture. Sound clash is a subculture in a next sub subculture. Right. Yeah. So it's like he said, it's like niche. It's like for for the for the for the for the for the nerds, for the sound nerds, you know. And <laughs> yeah. what we try to do, well, that's it. What we try to do is like keep that little part alive and that's what we did since 2004 we just want to be a part of it and keep that part of of, of subculture of sound clash alive and that's what we're trying to do because the it's the love we we have for sound clash and it's not like you know uh, people think okay you so you're promoting the biggest clash in europe so you know money thing bloody de blah no not at all because most of all you you're lucky if you make break even as a promoter. So it's actually just for the love which we have for SoundCloud and keeping that part alive. And hopefully someone or, you know, another group will take over the torch and bring it further in the next 20 years. Well, I'm still, I'm still doing it, not to, you know, but 
hopefully it, it, it expands a little bit more and, and it gets more attention. With that said, of course, the sound clash online, the currency clash, is giving us a little hope as well. So it's a good a good move from Walshy Fire and, and Mattia, my friend. So I hope they continue to keep doing this and, you know, hopefully we gaining a, a few fans. Well, well, that's kind of what I was going to get to. I mean, even Mattia, before you, you were saying how he's kind of stopped promoting uh, so many clashes at his U club because it's been tough. The, the turnout is tough. Yeah, People not definitely. coming out. So I guess there has been a, a, a dip um, you know, in terms of young and f younger people uh, into Clash. So now I see yes. that, you know, all the veteran sounds are still there. The people who started playing in the late 90s or early 2000s, you know, mid 2000s, they're still kind of flying the flag. But where is the Clash sound from 2012 or 2013? Right. You're right. And these sounds, don't forget, which is very important, these sounds bring in a new Clash fans as well. When we entered the Clash scene in 2005 or four or something, as sound as Herbalize it, we brought a new fan base with us as well. Sure. When you have no new sounds, that means you have no new fan base. So it's still like in a few years, even in Europe, it's going to be the same as in New York. You're going to see 40 plus Clash hats in a Clash. So when I start clashing, there were like 50, 50, I mean, 20 years old people in the Clash. You don't see no. them anymore. No. So it's not only the sounds, but also the, the, the massive. No. For sure. So do you, think, do you think the quarantine clash, I mean, you briefly mentioned that it could be something that kind of uh, reignites uh, clash in a way. But, uh, I mean, you've tuned into to all of them or most of them. So yeah, what, most according of them. to you, I, I, I missed one. What, what has been... What's been sort of like the good things you've taken out of it? And what's been the things where, you know, uh, you're just like, mm, it's not the same or, well, I don't know. It will never be the same, but it's, I can only, I mean, seriously, I mean, even with the radio shows you're watching online, uh, the, the live juggling, it's never going to be the same, but it's, uh, it's an adjustment at, for, for everything we're doing. So I see only positive things for the, for, from this coming out. Okay. So this whole sound clash, it's, you can't compare it with the, the real sound clash. Never. You're never going to feel a forward or give a forward when you're in a dance between all of your, you know, people then being behind your Instagram. Or, because it's not only Walshy Fire and Mattia, but also uh, Major Hype, the comedian, doing a lot of clashes. Yeah. which attract like five, six, seven thousand people watching it. Wow. So it's, it's huge right now and, and I'm watching it and I love it. And sometimes it's just, just the audio, which is not really good. But for the rest, I can't complain. Really, I really, it's entertainment. And since we ain't got shit to do, I mean, seriously, we all, we all in the same boat, so. Yeah. Well, I guess that's why it works also online because it's entertainment. It's not necessarily a dance. It's not like you're going there to, you know, you're just going there to watch and listen and that you can do that looking at your screen, you know, like that's cool. Well, I'm going to give you one another example. Just recently, I think last week, I even tuned in um, uh, 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 also a musical battle, a sound clash between Teddy Riley and Babyface, two huge producers, singers, R&B singers from the States, which had like 500,000 wow. viewers. Teddy Riley versus Babyface. Look it up, everybody who's listening. So, yeah, that was crazy. Sick. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, so it's perhaps something that could stay even after this uh, COVID-19 you know, is, 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 is finished. Clash online could, could still be a thing. Definitely. Definitely. I think it's just a neg what I said, uh, an extra adjustment that what we are uh, already doing and I hope, hopefully, it's getting bigger and getting the attention of the younger people, which we really need in the younger sounds. But yeah, that's another subject. I mean, Why do you they... see the problem just with sounds, or do you see it with selectors as well? There's perhaps less uh, reggae uh, dancehall sounds and selectors coming up uh, now than there were maybe 10, 15 years ago. How it comes? Sorry, I didn't get the question. 
I mean, do you think it's just a it's just a matter of people like uh, like pe clash enthusiasts, or do you think it's just maybe perhaps less selectors and sounds starting up now than there were 10, 15 years ago? Both. Like I explained, it's both. It's because if you don't have the young sounds, you won't have the young audience. Because mostly the young sounds bring the young audience. Because I see there's plenty of DJs, like a lot of people are DJing now, probably more than ever, but uh, perhaps not doing it in a way where, you know, uh, I don't well, know. Everything is easy, accessible, accessible for everybody. So to be a DJ, if you started like 20 years ago, you had to really, really do something, you know, buy your vinyl, mm -hmm. buy your equipment. But right now you need a virtual DJ program in your DJ. Or oh, USB stick, yeah. yeah. Exactly, so. Yeah, Definitely. well, so I hope I, I still hope it getting better. And but one thing I put already aside me, which is SoundClash is never going to be mainstream. I mean, it can reach certain mainstream festivals like it's doing right now in Jamaica and you know, like some fest brought it. Matia won it last year. Um, I think even the uh, Rebel Salute did uh, like a showcase, which turned wow. into a sound clash. So it's getting a little bit more and, uh, you know, so it's more reachable for the bigger crowd, for the mainstream crowd. But we we're talking about the reggae dancer crowd, eh? Yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, I see in some perspective, of course, the, the I totally forgot, uh, the cruise, the One Love cruise or the, uh, the one... Jam Rock, Marley, welcome to Jam Rock. The Jam Rock cruise, exactly, which is... The, the, the sound clash is one of the highlights of the, the cruise, which is a, already an improvement yeah. for us sound clash lovers, because that's the thing I'm looking forward to. I mean, even at Rotterdam, we look forward to the clash, right? If you go to Rotterdam, you look forward to the clash. Definitely. So all the, yeah. all, the, all the festivals doing it right now, and I think, you know, it attracts a lot of people and it attracts a lot of new fans, so hopefully this continue after the whole quarantine and we can continue doing this. For sure. So um, just quickly, do you want to just maybe, they, you know, there are going to be people tuned in who don't know much about, uh, about Clash. So are there any particular, just, I know it's very difficult to just pick off a few, but any sort of memorable moments, video clips, uh, clashes that are on SoundCloud or, Mm, you know, sounds maybe that you, you know, maybe a few of your like top favorite entertainers that you feel people should just check out before this class clash on Saturday night. Just one, <laughs> just which is Matterhorn versus Firelinks. Just Google it, YouTube it. That's my favorite, and still after years, and I'm still watching it, and like at least once to three months, I still get good from it. Matterhorn versus Firelinks. I think it was 2001 or night P1. Just type it in. Matterhorn versus Firelinks P1. Mm. Baddest thing I ever see. When he dropped the cable to the fall, what you see in there, it's like, it still gives me goosebumps. And I wasn't even there. So, you know, <laughs> imagine. Yeah, mm. so yeah. Definitely. That's the one everybody got to check out. And there are so much song clashes online, so... You know, educate yourself. Stop scrolling through Facebook and go to YouTube and, you know, type I it in. You, you, will, you will see it. That's how we did it. You know, we were lucky that we, get, back in the days, getting the, cas the cassettes from yeah. a Soundflash. You know, that's how we started in the early 90s, listen to Soundflash. But, yeah, for now, Firelinks versus Matterhorn, Pier 1, somewhere around the millennium, 2000. Go watch it, people. Enjoy yourself, because that's, 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 that's pure ent entertainment. You even see Firelinks doing a split on stage. That's like, <laughs> you know, and that, that split he made got him forward. So y'all got to watch it. Y'all got to watch it. Okay. Um, lastly, just going to wrap things up, but why did you, I mean, are you familiar with, uh, I mean, you're obviously familiar with the scene in India, you've been here, performed here, shouted down. You, I think, if I remember correctly, there was all, we also did something with Delhi Sultanate on stage, right? At that festival. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We brought yeah. him on and there was a little bit of a, we did a little. Uh, yeah, kind of yeah. Moment. 
together. So yeah, so I guess you know him to an extent. Um, I don't know if you've been following the work he's been doing in India, but uh, he's been building his little box. He's been he's been putting in his work, doing it in his own way, in his own style. Is um, are you familiar with uh, Jamaiki? Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay. I heard of cool. I heard of him, and I think I met him once when we were doing the Cali tour. I think it was the same year as we did the India tour in 2012. Yeah. So yeah, well, I heard of him just like lately a little bit more because he's making a noise and you know, uh, and he's doing very well on his own specifically way. So it's going to be tough. What would you say his style is? I mean, more like, I mean, what, what kind of, what do we, what do we, what can we expect from John Mikey? Big dubs. Yeah, big dubs, big speeches. You know, probably he would, he won't curse too much because that's also a thing in sound clash. You know, you, 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 you curse at each other. And yeah, well, he's not like, he's more the, 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 the nice guy, but still, Lido. All right, because I feel and, like, you know, the, the European sounds and, you know, a lot of you guys in Europe are so big and you have a, you know, you have a, you have a, you have a style. I don't want to say that it's similar, but it's kind of like shaped by others around you. You know, whereas someone in in California, I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about him. I, I heard a couple. I of think. I think uh, if you want to make a comparison, I think the the California style of reggae music in general looks uh -huh. like the European. Okay. Uh, music style, reggae music style. It's like the same. You know. So I think it's, you know, Jamaica versus the European sound would be a good match as well. So it comes from that school, kind of. Definitely, but you have to also notice that Jamaica is from the States. So, you know, he got ex examples as LP and King Addis, which we have, of course, as well. But, you know, he's from there. So I think it's a mix of. Right. Like I said, I only saw him clashing on video and on tapes. Uh, I heard him, so I, I didn't never saw him live so all right all right we'll see we'll see i know telly sultan has been working hard a lot of uh you know a lot of thought goes into his dubs and and he's got a different style of presenting you know i wouldn't say he his style is european at all so so it's going to be an interesting one for sure definitely i'm going to be tuned in definitely yeah man something nice to see you bro respect all right give thanks respect to the whole family yeah man you too respect to the whole herbalizer crew thanks a lot and ziggy Bye. You see him. Bless up. He's, he's family too. Bless up. Bless. Bless. Respect. All right, Clash Addicts. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have all enjoyed this little session. We'll be hosting two more talks. Tomorrow we've got a little chat with Delhi Sultan and himself, Base Foundation Roots, representing India on Sunday. So, um, We'll be chatting to him tomorrow. And then on Saturday, we have Scratch Famous out of Deadly Dragon Sound. Deadly Dragon is a big New York City institution. So definitely tune in for the next two episodes tomorrow with Delhi Sultanate, Base Foundation Roots, and day after with Scratch Famous from Deadly Dragon. We're leading up to the quarantine clash. Big up yourselves, everyone who tuned in, all the Indian Massive, Dr. Dub, Rahul Mangal, Starboy Nation, the whole crew, big up Box Out FM for the platform, big up everyone from around the world, all the sound system heads, all the sound clash heads who tuned in. Quarantine Clash 2020 coming up this weekend. We're behind Delhi Sultanate, Base Foundation Roots. You know we're there. We'll see you guys tomorrow with Delhi Sultanate himself. Big up.